major breaking news out of the United States District Court for the District of Connecticut. A 79-year-old judge, a district court judge, appointed to the bench by Bill Clinton by the name of Janet Bond Arterton, has written a 70-plus page decision explaining why Connecticut's so-called assault weapon ban and magazine ban is somehow constitutional with the Second Amendment and the U.S. Supreme Court decision in Heller versus the District of Columbia. This decision is clearly wrong. Now, because I'm on the road, I'm going to skip my usual intro and close here and cut right to the chase. The bottom line is that this judge, I suspect, is anti-gun. She wrote a lot of stuff. There's a lot of ink spilled. At the end of the day, she clearly got it wrong. She's playing games. I suspect she's pretending that she doesn't understand what the Supreme Court means. It's a typical thing we see with anti-gun judges across the country. This is just another one in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals there in Connecticut. So no shock to see this. The name of this case, by the way, is National Association for Gun Rights versus Edward Lamont. Uh, that is the name of the case. The bottom line, though, is this. In 2008, the U.S. Supreme Court, in the, Supreme, in the case of Heller, said that firearms that are in common use by Americans for lawful purposes are protected arms. It struck down a ban on a type of firearm, in that case, handguns, semi-automatic handguns and revolvers, handguns. And that is a pretty much the straightforward hint. So what this judge did, of course, is what a lot of judges who hate guns do, is they pretend uh, that Heller has somehow been modified or shrunk or narrowed by subsequent Supreme Court cases, which it clearly hasn't been. And again, that's what she said here. She goes on to say that really the standard is not what Heller said, it's that whether or not these handguns or these semi-automatic rifles, I should say, these assault weapons, whether or not they're useful for self-defense. And then she relies on experts to say they are not. But of course, in Heller, all Heller said was that we, the people, that the American people choose weapons for self-defense and they get to decide, not some expert testifying in a courtroom in Connecticut, which is what this judge did. Again, the, we, the people, decide what we want to use for lawful purposes. The government doesn't decide this. She also made an obvious mistake because she says at the end of her opinion, which is very long, that there are thousands of guns that are still available for Connecticut residents to be able to use for self-defense, just not the ones that have been taken off the board. That is clearly not allowed under Heller because, as you recall, there's a very express line in the Heller decision that says that the mere fact that rifles are available for people who lived in the District of Columbia was no constitutional argument that will allow, allow them to ban other types of firearms. In the Heller case, it was banning handguns because there are rifles and shotguns available for uh, Americans in D.C. And basically, she is adopting the view that was rejected by the Supreme Court, even though she is an inferior court. And I hate to say this when it comes to Judge Archerton here, but the word inferior has multiple meanings and not just the one we find in Article 3 of the U.S. Constitution based upon my review of this opinion. But let me go beyond that. She also uses the classic get-out-of-jail card that the anti-gun judges are also using, which I wrote an entire article about, which is getting published very soon. You'll be very excited about but set that issue aside. She's trying to say that these changes in society, a social change or unprecedented technological advances allows her to ignore this precedent and apply whatever she wants for all intents and purposes, allowing for this ban to stay in effect. Of course, what she's ignoring is that uh, you know, in 2007, a single person killed 34 people at Virginia Tech using semi-automatic handguns with high, quote-unquote, large-capacity magazines. And less than a year later in the, in the Supreme Court, in the Heller case, the Heller case set forth that weapons that are in common use cannot be banned. So obviously, mass shootings is not a new social change that allows the igno ignorance or the ignoring of uh, federal law, including the Supreme Court and the Second Amendment, because that's not what happened to Heller, which occurred after a year, a year after the Virginia Tech mass shooting. Beyond that, of course, she also makes an observation here uh, that I want to flag uh, to your attention is that she basically shifted the burden of proof from the government to the plaintiffs. The reality is, as you know from uh, the Supreme Court precedent, that the burden is on the government to justify these gun laws. What she basically said is that the plaintiffs have failed to show that these types of weapons are used in self-defense, but that is not the standard. The question is whether or not they are in common use specifically. Um, are they or not? And the government bears the burden to show they are not in not in common use. Beyond that, even if you wanted to apply sort of the flip side of that, which the anti-gunners like to do, talk about the standard of dangerous and unusual, dangerous and unusual, the burden of proof to establish that standard is also on the government, which means the government have to show again that these types of weapons that are being banned in kinetic are not in common use, i.e. they are unusual, and that is simply impossible because millions and millions of Americans own these. And don't forget this is a nationwide standard 
because Heller and Catano all talk about what Americans across the country own, not in any particular jurisdiction, like in Connecticut or like in DC or like in Massachusetts. It's a nationwide standard. And obviously millions of people own um, uh, these types of firearms, these semi-automatic rifles and magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. Bottom line is, this is another terrible decision from a judge uh, that is you know, not competent on the Second Amendment. Uh, we're seeing a lot of these. I'm surprised this, I'm not surprised. Uh, this is the outcome because they're very bitter that they can't engage in their uh, cost benefit analysis, their tiers of scrutiny, which they've been doing for so many years. And they're looking for a way to get around the Supreme Court precedent. And they can get away with it perhaps in the short run, but it's not gonna work in the, in the long run is my guess. I think the Supreme Court is gonna come in and spank all these judges and clean it up yet again the mess that these judges are leaving, including in this case here involving the National Association for Gun Rights. Okay, folks, if you haven't subscribed to the Four Box Star, please do so. And I apologize for all my uh, informality here because I'm on the road today. Talk to you soon. Four Box Designer, we'll see you soon. Orders up. Table 2A.